I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm a part-time professor at the University of Ottawa. I teach uh, climate change, uh, meteorology, oceanography, environmental issues. And I came to the COP because I think that people are underestimating the risks that we face from abrupt climate change, specifically in the Arctic region. The CO2 level um, is one of the things that we've been talking about a lot at the at the COP. Okay, the COP is all about um, reducing emissions, and the reason for reducing emissions is because we have built up too many greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and the one most talked about is CO2, and many people will have seen this. This is the atmospheric concentration over about almost a million years, and it's gone up and down with the ice age and uh, warm periods, but right now it's off of the chart. We're, we've just passed 400 uh, parts per million. This is the whole problem. We've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere. Now, could I have the next slide, please? So this is a shorter time scale, 1960 to, to, to close to today, and you can see the CO2 level rising. We're rising two to three parts per million per year each year. It's zigzagging because when in the northern hemisphere most of the vegetation is there so in the spring when the leaves form on the trees they pull a lot of CO2 out of the atmosphere and we get a dip and then uh, in the fall when the leaves fall off the deciduous trees um, and there's no longer CO2 being absorbed the trees go dormant in the winter and we get a rise so this is it's like the earth is breathing in a way um, but it's not just the chemistry of the atmosphere that we have changed. We've also changed the chemistry of the ocean. So this curve here shows the rise of CO2 in the seawater um, just in the last couple decades. Now, when you get more CO2 in the seawater, you get carbonic acid formed, and that is why the oceans are acidifying. So we measure that with the pH, which is a logarithmic scale, and it's dropping down here. So why is this a problem? Uh, next slide, please. So the next slide shows a, lo a longer uh, time scale. So we've got the last 25 million years along this axis. So the pH of the open ocean, the surface water, has fluctuated. As you can see, there's been some fluctuation. The lower the value, the more, the, the more acidic the ocean. So in 2000, we were here. You know, now we're over here. So the problem is the pH of the open ocean has fallen from about 8.2 to 8.05 in the last 30 years. So when the pH is too low, right now we're about 8.05. When we get down to 7.9, 7.8, oysters can't form shells, lobsters can't form shells, phytoplankton can't, and the behavior at the base of the food chain changes. So this is a very serious issue. Some people call this the evil twin of climate change. You know, we talk about the atmosphere and CO2 levels, but there's very little talk, talk about the ocean. Okay, so next slide, please. So what else are we changing? Besides the chemistry of the atmosphere and ocean, we're changing the very nature of the Arctic. If you look at the Arctic from space, you see white. The white is from the sea ice, and it's from the snow cover. Now, this is the sea ice area from over time, Okay, um, and the models, the IPCC models, they use about 20 or 30 climate models. They use equations um, to model what's going on, and you put in as many parameters as you know about. And the average of all those models is the black line, and the gray is the extreme from the range of all of the models of the ensemble, if you like. What the data is showing is the red. The red is the observations, it's what we're seeing. So clearly, the models are severely underestimating the loss of the sea ice extent over time. And this was a minimum here, and then it'll, you know, up. But the general trend is much lower than the models. As, as fast as the um, sea ice is falling, the snow cover in the Arctic in the spring is following at an even faster rate. So you see the curve, the last curve was the sea ice dropping. Um, the snow cover on the land is also dropping. Underneath the snow cover, of course, is the darker permafrost. 
underneath the sea ice is the dark ocean. So the actual reflectivity of the entire Arctic has decreased. It's getting darker, so it's absorbing more solar energy, so it's heating for that reason. So this shows you the temperature distribution on the planet. We, all, all we're, we're fixated on two degrees or one and a half degrees, which is a global average temperature, but it's the distribution that's key. So what you can see is the bright red at the top is between two and four degrees of increase overall, and this is from 1960 to 2011. So in that five decades, the Arctic, high Arctic has warmed you know, up two, three, four degrees. In fact, this curve shows the, lat the warming with latitude. So much higher in the Arctic, this is uh, South Antarctica, Arctic. So it's much, much higher in the Arctic. Now, why is this important? This is very important for weather patterns because the jet streams which guide storms, next slide please, I'll show you the, okay, so the jet streams guide storms and they can be thought of as a wall between cold, dry Arctic air and warm, humid um, equatorial air. So the cold air is above and the, the warm air is below. So um, I talked to a friend in Canada, he's a meteorologist, he said it's 12 degrees Celsius right now in, Canada, in, in Ottawa, and the mean average temperature is minus five degrees. So we're, we're almost, you know, we're approaching 20 degrees Celsius, warmer than normal. This isn't just one day, this is a, for a period of weeks. I mean, we're used to going further north and it being colder, and that would happen if the jet streams were just running from west to east. But because they're so wavy, they're moving slower, then you, you, don't, you can go north, far north here, and be much, much warmer than you are very far, very far south. So the next slide, please. This is a schematic. Okay, so this is actual data from an excellent site. If you, go, if you Google Earth Null School, you can get all kinds of climate data real time. So this is from, a, you can get data for the previous day. So this is the jet streams which fly about the altitude of uh, commercial aircraft, jets, that's the name. And you can see how wavy it is. So this will be very cold here, very cold here, very warm here. You can see these ridges and troughs. And these things get stuck, and they're moving more slowly. So if a, if a storm system is laden with water and it's moving more slowly, it will tend to lo uh, drop most of that precipitation in one area. So we're seeing many areas, many cities, where we might get three or four months of rain in one night, which we never had before. So Norway has seen 200 year, one in 200 year floods, the UK, you know, Europe is being hit very hard right now. Next slide, please. So the, because the Arctic is warming so much, we're seeing lots of Greenland melt. We're also seeing Antarctic melt and combining them. Notice the curve, it's not linear. So the curve is going up in an exponential form. So the, the doubling time, every five to seven years, the rate of melt from Greenland and Antarctica doubles. So if you just carry this forward, if it continues to double, we're talking about enormous sea level rises. You can just calculate on the back of an envelope seven meters by 2070. Hopefully this doesn't happen, right? We can't let this happen. Next slide, please. We're gonna have to... Uh, okay, we're, we're, we're gonna wrap it up. So I... Um, this is sea ice, it's decreasing every month. Now, the solutions, I consider a three-legged stool. We only talk about one leg at the, leg at the cop. We, we need to zero emissions as soon as possible. To stay under 1.5 degrees, we need to zero emissions by 2030. Uh, to stay under two degrees, we need to zero emissions by 2050. But this isn't enough, I would argue. We need CO2 removal methods. We need to, to biomimicry. We need to take CO2 out of the atmosphere and also solar radiation management. We need to look at that.